Hey, Tom Altair here, certified nutritionist. I have two science degrees from Bastyr University. I work with the Autism Research Institute. And I'm really concerned as a father of five about the health and wellness of the children of today and tomorrow. So I'm looking into food, I'm looking into chemicals, and I'm here at a Biosafety Alliance conference in Seattle so we can talk to people about the probable health effects of the consumption of genetically modified foods. So a lot of people are interested in what may be happening to the human population with the consumption of GMOs, and the reality is no one knows. Although the average United States citizen is consuming about 198 pounds of genetically modified foods per year, we don't know what we're consuming because it's not labeled, and we have no idea what the adverse health consequences may be. The FDA in 1992, under the supervision of uh, Michael Taylor, who was a Monsanto employee, passed, without really much regulation, the allowance of genetically modified food into our food supply. And there are a number of geneticists, scientists, who are saying, no, wait a second. These are not the same as regular hybrid plants. Why in the world aren't we doing safety testing? Well, there's a lot of people saying they are the same, they're similar enough that you shouldn't be concerned. However, the term genetic modification implies that these are indeed new to nature. In fact, they are patented. If they were not different than natural compounds, there would be no need for patents. So if they are different, which they are, and you're inserting genes into a portion of an organism that you have no idea where the insertion is taking place, you're just hoping it does take place, you have no idea what the surrounding genome might be, you have no idea what happens when you do cloning, there is likely numerous variants in the DNA itself. We know of, in the research all the time now, something called a single nucleotide polymorphism, which is one nucleotide, one little base pair in the DNA that's changed. And we know that that can increase disease risk. So what happens when there's hundreds, if possibly thousands of changes, when you insert genes into an organism? We have no idea. So there's a, a big call amongst the scientific community to say, we need further testing. In fact, in the European Union, what we're finding now is they've said, look, Seralini's data, the study showing the rats who were fed GM corn, Roundup, or Roundup and GM corn, that had tremendous tumor growth and abnormalities of the pituitary gland, the kidney, the liver, they're now saying, look, this research is valid. We need to be concerned about this. So I'll tell you, the next step is for us as a group to stand up and say, wait a second, I don't want my children consuming this until you can guarantee me there are not going to be adverse health effects to my children and to the environment in which my children are growing up in. Because what we're seeing now is that the genetic modified pollen is getting on to the milkweed, which then can change butterfly migration and all sorts of factors. So we have no idea. With the now suggested introduction of RNA silencing apples or with genetic modified salmon, we're just adding more insult to injury. The original genetically modified crops have not been proven safe. There are no human safety data studies. There are no long-term studies at all in humans. There are no short-term studies in humans. This seems a little absurd to try and introduce now species. There's a rainbow trout they're working on. There's a salmon they're working on. We really need to stop, pause, and say, wait, let's make sure these are safe, and then we can consider continuing on if we do it all. So as a clinician, what we're looking at these days is a tremendous increase in irritable bowel. We're looking at a tremendous increase in neurological and behavioral disorders. So ADD, ADHD, autism. Interesting thing, Swanson wrote a paper in the Seattle Examiner that did a correlation between the introduction of an herbicide that's commonly used on genetically modified crops called glyphosate and the increase in autism. And she found almost a perfect correlation, uh, 0.985. So the correlation coefficient was 0.985. The tightest you can get is a 1, 1 1.0. So we're very, very close to that. Is it possible by us increasing the use of glyphosate, this herbicide Roundup, over the last decade plus, that we might be 
leaving our kids more susceptible for neurological diseases? Because it turns out that this glyphosate is a very potent mineral chelator. It binds to minerals and does not let them go. By binding those minerals, those minerals are not available to plants. Plants need those minerals in order to survive. They use them in their own biochemistry to produce things like aromatic amino acids, things you've heard of maybe tryptophan. You know, tryptophan, that amino acid that everybody takes if they have mood problems. The amino acid they take if they have sleep problems. Because tryptophan turns into serotonin in the body, and serotonin turns into melatonin. Serotonin is that feel-good neurotransmitter. Melatonin is the sleep neurotransmitter. It regulates your sleep-wake cycles. So is it possible that we've had a 400% increase in the use of antidepressant medication? Yes. Since the increased use of glyphosate and the introduction of genetically modified crops, it's true. It has happened. Is it possible that we're seeing more aggressive behavior, that we're seeing more behavioral disorders, autism, because of the amino acid insufficiencies? We don't know. No one's looking at the data. Although Anthony Samsell and Stephanie Seneff, in an article in Entropy, did examine some of the existing research and said this is a plausible explanation for some of the increase. Perhaps that's why Swanson sees such a tight correlation coefficient between the increased use of this roundup and the incidence of autism. So as a faculty member of the Autism Research Institute, one of the things we're constantly seeing that makes the biggest effect in these children's lives is to clean up their diets. It doesn't have to be a gluten-free, casein-free diet, although that helps. It doesn't have to be a GAPS diet, although that may help. What is the most important thing is to clean up the diet. And what does that mean? As a consensus of nutritionists who are working in the autism, ADD, ADHD community, that means putting kids on organic diets, getting rid of the processed foods, lowering their exposures to some of the chemicals. In order to do this, my wife and I put out actually a cookbook called the Whole Life Nutrition Cookbook, and we have a website, a blog called Whole Life Nutrition. And in Whole Life Nutrition, we try and point out the fact that usually kids are imbalanced, adults are imbalanced, we're as a, a population imbalanced, when we have either too much of something or too little of something. We're either getting exposed to too many chemicals and toxins or food sensitivities, or we're not getting enough nutrients in. So we focus on consuming organic whole foods that are very nutrient dense and removing the processed foods. And at the same time, making it taste absolutely delicious. So if you want something that will help with lots of health ailments, whether it's the irritable bowel, attention deficit, autism, whatnot, consider eating a very nutrient dense whole foods diet. So the question becomes, should we be voting on these initiatives, like Initiative 522 that's coming up here in Washington? It would label genetically modified foods. And by labeling genetically modified foods, then you could make a choice as to whether or not you want to contribute to a science that's very infantile, that's very not proven safe. And you could then vote with your money, because that's how change is going to happen, folks. It's not going to happen at the ballot box. It's going to happen at the grocery store. It's going to happen on a daily basis. When you go in and you look at an item and you say, aha, genetically modified, well, that means I'm going to promote the use of billions of pounds of chemicals that may be affecting bees, that is affecting soil, that's affecting water, that may be affecting humans, and we definitely know adversely affects animals. So yeah. Why wouldn't you vote? Why wouldn't you label that product so you can do your own experiment, remove those from your life, and see if your eczema, your irritable bowel, your mood changes get better? Because that's what I'm seeing in clinical practice, and I'm hoping you find something similar as well. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Come check out uh, our websites online, wholelifenutrition.net and nourishingmeals.com, our food blog. And we'd love to see you there, share whatever we can with you. We have a bunch of great gluten-free organic recipes. We have an entire meal on our GMO-free section that talks about how you can eat GMO-free for the summer holidays. So, yep, join us, enjoy, and have a wonderful life. To try to pull the wall over your eyes While you weren't looking Your dinner was disguised You won't see it mentioned in the supermarket aisle 
Hiding in the boxes Where the GMOs are 